They're making the exhausting and dangerous journey up the Himalayan mountains in search of the world's most rare and expensive herb. This is Dolpa, with no roads, few jobs and reliant on food aid. It's the poorest and least developed region of Nepal. The population here is about to triple as more than 50,000 people travel along these trails. They've already been walking for 17 days and for the next six weeks they'll be camping on these mountains to harvest Yasha Gumba, a valuable and extraordinary substance known as Himalayan Viagra, the herb of life. Entire villages migrate for the harvest, locking up their homes and leaving the schools deserted. There are 503 students in 19 schools, but still now, no single student in any school. All of his students are going to collect Ersa Kumbo because Ersa Kumbo is important income source in Dolpo, for Dolpo. So they want to collect Ersa Kumbo and they earn money, how to earn money. Is it the holidays at the moment or is, it in the, is this school term? No holiday, holidays, because all teachers are waiting for students. When they come back in school, they're waiting. In the rush, many ignore the dangers of altitude sickness. This boy has been carried home after he started coughing up blood. His younger brother died the day before. The Buddhist Lama is praying for this man's soul in the next life. He died from exhaustion and cold. Paljung has come up from the valley with his family. He's making breakfast before setting off for work. He's only 12, and for the first time, his parents have brought him with his younger sister Numba to harvest Yashagamba. For most of the year, they have no income. They survive on what little food they grow. Now they're hoping to strike it rich. <laughs> the dead caterpillars lie buried in the soil. All you can see from the surface are tiny brown stalks among the grass. <laughs> the life cycle of Yashagamba is not fully understood, but what we do know is that at the beginning of the monsoon, spores of the cordyceps mushroom land on the head of caterpillars from the Lepidoptera family. The parasite then works its way into the insect's brain, soaking up its energy before killing it. <laughs> They're only found at high altitude in remote parts of the Himalayas. But the world's best Yashagamba comes from here in Dolpa. Chinese emperors from the Qing dynasty were the first to use it. And more recently, three world records were broken by Chinese athletes whose diet was supplemented with the herb. <laughs> Paljung and Numba will collect around 20 caterpillars a day. They sell them for a dollar each to the traders. In Dolpa, a dollar is a daily wage for a skilled worker. His family hopes to sell a thousand caterpillars by the end of the season. This represents a fortune. Eventually, each caterpillar will be sold for up to $30. The main markets are China, Singapore and Taiwan. The trade is worth about two and a half million dollars to Dolpa. The government should make 10% of this in taxes. But the Maoist rebels who want to replace the monarchy with a communist republic have taken over most of Dolpa, forcing out the government agencies, destroying their buildings and killing their officials. Now they're taking the Yashagamba tax for themselves, starving the government of its income. This is Nepal's main Yashagamba exporter, 
He's come back home to Dolpa for the harvest. His business has been damaged by the Maoists. The Maoists make money out of trade of Yasugumba by imposing uh, uh, tax, tax on the traders and by uh, collecting entry and harvest permit uh, to the harvesters and by uh, harvesting themselves and by imposing fines uh, to, to, to the harvesters and local people. And in last year's case, they made a huge amount of money by looting around 200 kgs of Yasagumba. With so many people on the mountain, the local Dolpali are furious that people from outside this area have come to harvest their Yashagumba. With the government forced out, the Maoists are in charge. So the locals want the Maoists to send the others back. You might as well kill us all. How can we feed our children if you allow others in, she shouts. With feelings running high, the Maoists decide to confiscate the men's knives. The more people picking the crop, the more tax the Maoists can claim. So they're reluctant to turn anyone away. Altogether, the Maoists earn more than three million US dollars a year from the herb. The funds pay for their army, which is cheap to run. These two soldiers, like many others, are volunteers. They don't wear uniform and expect locals to house and feed them. Their weapons are often basic, even homemade. Is that a grenade in your pocket? Yes, grenade. Can I see it? Yes. How are you going to use that? It is for fighting against the government. It's for fighting against the government? Yes. In Denai, one of the few government-controlled areas in Dolpa, the chief military official refuses to admit the Maoists are running the Yashagamba business. There is no any, you know, Maoist interference, you know, because we always provide the, you know, high security, you know, in this district. Because of that, there is no any, you know, Maoist influence, you know, in this, you know, area, you know. And if you go up to Upper Dolpa, is it... Well, we always monitor the situations. If we need, we'll go in every part of the district, you know. Right. So no problem? No problem. But the truth is, more than 90% of Yashagamba is smuggled out, with no tax paid to the government. And when people do pay the official tax, the Maoists punish them. One trader told me his donkeys were kidnapped. They were carrying his crop worth a million dollars. But despite the risks, it's still good business. The price of Yashagamba has soared in the last 10 years. It's up by a staggering 4,000%. It's now half the price of gold. A friend of mine who went to Japan and went to one restaurant where they were selling a vegetable soup with three Yashagamba floating on top, and the price was $100 per bowl of soup. Here in Kathmandu, the herb is processed and sold as a miracle health drink and even as a treatment for cancer patients. It's only in the last three years that it's been legal to collect Yashagamba in Nepal. Until then, it was a protected species. Ooh, full power. And mama. The main property uh, gives you, like it says, energy unlimited, so it works as a Vigra. So I call it a very natural Vigra from the Himalayas, like, you know. So, phew. Man makes you get really a little sexy, I guess. <laughs> Studies by Beijing Medical University have shown a 64% success rate among men suffering from impotency after taking a course of Yashagamba. It's recommended that it's first dried, powdered, and mixed with milk before being consumed three times a day. The Tibetans suggest combining it with sparrow's head and the urine of a snow frog. But whatever the concoction, the best thing is, there's no side effects. These yaks are carrying a valuable Yashagamba consignment. 
They're heading away from the government areas towards the Chinese border. The Maoists have already taken their cut, leaving the government without a penny and further weakened by the loss of income. In Dolpa, a family's wealth is measured by the number of children who can pick Yashagamba. For Paljung's family, the political situation is beyond their grasp. They're only looking to survive, unaware they're fueling a war which is destroying their country. Yeah.